Landers and Valley Steen. Valley Landers leading 110 to 16 at half time. We've one switch, Matt. Matt, Matt O'Callaghan will fill you in here in any moment now. What's the change, Matt? The change it's on the Valley Steen side. The change is on the Valley Steen side, and it's the very experienced Shane Gallagher who has come into the game. He's come in at centre back in place of Paddy Vaughan, who was at midfield, and it looks as if. Um, uh, Packy Morton, who was at centre back in the first half, is now partnering James O'Mara at midfield. And referee Jonathan Hay is about to get us underway, and we are underway for the second half as the aforementioned Packy Morton takes possession and launches one. It's an easy one for Stephen Walsh. Well read. Danny Neville was in behind, hoping for a slip from Stevie Walsh, but he's way too experienced to let that happen. And Walsh comes away. With a good run, finds Kieran Kelly. Kieran Kelly now with possession for Bally Landers in the opening stages of the second half. Back inside, it was a good challenge there from Rannan. From John O'Shaughnessy, he's blown up for picking it. The challenge was fine. He was blown up for handling the ball on the ground. And Bally Landers free, which will be taken by Liam Martin. Liam Martin gives it a short one to Kieran Kelly. And Kelly now takes off. Kelly beats one. Decides not to take on the second and gives it back to Martin. Martin. Spots the run of Stevie Fox and Fox takes possession. Low ball from Stevie Fox into Jimmy Barry Murphy. Uses his strength to hold off Conor Enright and Jimmy Barry Murphy's on the run here. Heading towards the end line. Murphy with a bit of a jink. Chance on. Taps it over the bar. Fisted point. In fact, it's wide. It's a wide. Big chance for Jimmy Barry Murphy. Looked to have gone over. Matt, he'll be very disappointed to have not finished that off. He will be very disappointed. Um, but I, I'm not so sure was it the right option because he was very, very much on on the in line. Now, uh, you know, you were into medical territory and trying it there. I, 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 I would have thought, um, I would have thought probably the play there was was to get it into the danger area because I didn't think the chance was on from what we saw here. And it's Ballyland or Bally Landers back with the ball. Jason Lee, of course, is playing corner back. Jonathan Hayes isn't leaving this one go anyway. It'll be some breaking play here. Jonathan Hayes again. Not happy where the ball was taken. Jason Lee will retake him. We'll just move on from that one very quickly. Lee lining up his options, gives it long. That's going to go out over the other, the same end line. And poor enough from Jason Lee on that occasion, Matt. Yeah, but talking you mentioned Jason Hayes there he, he's a relatively new referee and he has stepped up to this level uh, uh, sorry Jonathan Hayes um, has, has has stepped up th this year and um, from what we've seen here for the first 35 minutes he, he, he's he's completely in, in, in control of the situation now he, 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 he is pretty strict but he, 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 you can't argue with somebody that's strict once he's strict on both sides he's consistent Completely agree with you there, Matt, as Jonathan Hayes moves this free in further for due to Conor Rennan throwing the ball away for handling it on the ground. Be a relatively easy one for Kieran Kelly, especially given the one he pointed in the first half from a much more difficult angle. He hit that one high and it went straight over the black spot. We'll see what he does with this one. A couple of hops for Kieran before he takes a decision about what he's going to do. He keeps this one low. It's the same result though for Kieran Kelly, and that's the first score of the second half. Puts Belly Landers into a five point advantage. They lead Belly Steen 111 to 16 in this Limerick Senior Football Championship quarter final. Brought to you here in Kilmallock by Sporting Limerick on their YouTube channel. Five point lead again. Yeah, uh, uh, um, Belly Landers certainly will be happy with it. Um, but Bally Steen, whilst they, they, they finished the first half with a bit of a flourish, um, they, 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 they certainly are slow in coming out of the traps now. I know there's only three minutes gone, but um, they have left Melinander's grab an early initiative. Now, this is a free that's certainly within Jimmy Barry Murphy's compass, and this, this will be two frees that they will have conceded and, and um, early on. And it, 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 it pu possibly put them into a six points deficit, um, which there'll be a bit of work to do it's Jimmy Barry Murphy about this line this one up we apologise if you heard any bad language there in the background we're absolutely no control of that as Murphy lines this free up from we'll say 40 metres Matt close enough 35 to 40 anyway it's one definitely within his compass range albeit kicking into a bit of a breeze yeah, a breeze. I'd say that probably has freshened a bit since since we since we came here earlier earlier in the day now he's teeing it up 
and the same result. Absolutely no problem for Jimmy Barry Murphy and he kicks Valley Landers into a six point lead. 112 to 16 in their favour after four minutes of this second half. Poor enough start for Bally Steen. Of course, Bally Landers and lost Brian O'Connell in the first half to a black card. And for a penalty, that was brilliantly dispatched by Packy Moore. And that accounted for the Bally Steen goal. As Bally Landers win another free. And as Jimmy Barry Murphy has the ball now, he's Danny Froon outside. And Danny Froon's in space. And that's not a good idea because Danny Froon invariably is capable of tapping them over the bar. And once again, Danny Froon. Shows his qualities, seven point lead now, Matt, and a fantastic start to this second half for Valley Landers. Yes, he has certainly recaptured his touch. It might have li- might have lost it there briefly before half time, but that's one four from play from Danny Froon is is an, an excellent return. But we're, 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 Jimmy Barry Murphy that laid it on. Jimmy Barry Murphy, he, he captained Bally Landers to victory in the 2014 um, final and he, he, he had an excellent year but um, I, I would honestly think that he, he, the influence that he's exerting on the present team is absolutely enormous he, the positive influence that he's bringing and the leadership that he's bringing in an, in, in an attack and you can see you, you can see there his General Shockness is kicking wide at the other end. You you can see that um, his involvement and how he involves other players. He, he's a real leader. He's a, he's a go go to man in 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 that Ballylander Ballylander's attack. Plus, you, you, we, we we've seen him from the freeze. All right, he missed that one that we spoke about after after half time. But certainly uh, this year, I, I I think it has been one of his best years for a long long time. Just before that wide from John O'Shaughnessy with Liam Martin picking up a yellow card for Bally Landers. And it's Bally Landers on the ball again, just under on 45 metre line. It's Stevie Walsh takes possession from Kieran Kelly. That's Walsh now moving forward. He's Mark O'Connell back across the Walsh. Under a bit of pressure from Mark Rannan. Takes the option to give it to Liam Martin instead. Or and away come Bally Landers with Jimmy Barry Murphy and Matt just told of his influence on this Bally Landers team. It's Murphy under pressure from Sean Whelan. He checks back onto his left foot, launches it a beautiful ball in to watch. Oh, watch that is Mark O'Connell now. It's Jason Lee on his outside, decides not to. Under pressure now from Packy Moore. And it's Jason Lee now. It's opened up a little bit for Jason Lee. It's into Oh, watch, watch. Decides to tap it over the bar, struck it well. It was always going over the bar. And that Bally Landers in full, full control of this game. They're in uh, full control, and, and, and here we have the first half all over again. Um, what have we? Less than seven minutes. They did it in five minutes in the first half, scored four points. They have scored four points, and, and, and they now lead by 114 to 16. And like the, 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 the gap is becoming big. We're into the second half. We'll, we'll be soon midway through the second half. And like certainly, uh, it, it was obvious from very, very early on in this second half. That that the Ballystein w- w- did not come out and pick up where they left off before half time. Whatever worked at the uh, Bally Landers dressing room at half time, the half time team talk has worked a treat. Has ba- Jimmy Barry Murphy, bit of a pot shot with that one. It's kept in play by Conor Rannan, so it won't go down as a wide. And Rannan plays the ball out to James O'Mara. Ballystein have had very little possession in the opening eight minutes of the second half, as Willie O'Mara tries to launch a, an attack for them. Shane Gallagher was on the run on his right hand shoulder but he decides to keep on going gives it to Ranahan Dara Ranahan now in fact it's in fact it's John O'Shaughnessy with the ball and that's back to Dara Ranahan Ranahan beautiful ball in from Ranahan but it's well blocked out by Stevie Walsh Danny Neville decides to keep it in play good control from Neville to even get that ball up he's faced by two players now Tom O'Dwyer and Stevie Walsh and it's a free given Danny Neville takes it quickly Quickly inside to Mark Rannan. Rannan has the strike. And it's tailing to the right and widen as a score that Ballystein badly needed. One that Rannan was capable of getting, but Matt ultimately stays at eight points. Yeah, it stays at eight points. It's eight minutes into the second half. You, you probably have to say it was, it was their first meaningful attack. Um, they, they, they will be disappointed w- w- with the outcome of it. Like, Ballylanders uh, have been as clinical so far in, in the second half as they were for the first 20 minutes of, of, of the first half. And, um, like, basically, you know, they, they just need probably to contain it, contain Ballystein now and don't let him build up any kind of momentum. Um, but, but, Bally Landers uh, are on top. 
as Mark O'Connell takes possession but he's unable to take hold of it after a fantastic Valley Landers move it's a good run from from Jason Lee and um, in the end it's a free from Valley Landers a free for Valley Cena should so given away by Mark O'Connell and Jonathan Hayes and having a word with Mark O'Connell and produces a yellow card for him there's a man down the Valley Landers team right in front of us we can't quite see who it is at the moment but it'll be a break in play in fact it is Owen Martin who's down see from here he's complaining with a issue with his head I think but uh, Mark on his right eye anyway so we'll have to keep an eye on that referee Jonathan Hayes consulting with his linesman he's calling Mark Rannan back Mikey Brown the linesman here Mark Rannan claims he's the wrong man like every other player who's ever been called over by the referee uh, the belly lander sideline down here in front of us were animated from the start now we followed the play and we, and we followed well, we followed the other incident but obviously the, the, there was something that they weren't happy with um, because immediately they, they called the referee's attention um, to what had happened to Noel Martin but happily or to Owen Martin or Owen is, is he's up and he's okay it's a yellow card either way from Mark Rennan as Matt said we didn't see the incident but Palestine now on the attack with James O'Mara back with play O'Mara leaves it off O'Shaughnessy hit by a huge shoulder by Jimmy Barry Murphy who now unbelievably and it's and O'Shaughnessy could be in a bit of trouble here he went in and Jimmy Barry Murphy was the man fouled now Shocknessy went in while Mar Murphy was on the ground this could be another card for Ballystein who if they have any chance of staying in this game or making any kind of a comeback they certainly need to keep 14 on the field Matt they, they, they certainly need to, to the referee now he's doing some work here it'll probably be a yellow I would imagine uh, yes it is a yellow but that's the second yellow now in the space of what two minutes um, you're right John um, look when, when, when you resort to that kind of stuff you're, you, you're, you're losing the focus on the job which is which is to play football and win a football match and um, but Valley Landers are staying focused but it, it, it just what, what we had been talking about a couple of minutes ago about the influence of Valley Murphy I, I, I think it was seen there uh, where he was back what 13 metres from his own goal he's been operating there for the last 5 or 6 minutes of Jimmy Barry Murphy right in front of his full back line another free coming here for Bally Landers this game just threatening to get out of control a little bit here Ballystein frustrated Ballystein sideline feeling things aren't going their way it's going to be another free as Jonathan Hayes checks on the Bally Landers man that's down it's Ono Mahoney that's down I think Matt it is Ono Mahoney you, you would have to say though John that uh, Jonathan Hayes was very close to the action there and um, he, he obviously had a, had a good view of what happened. He, he, he seems to be more concerned for the players' welfare at the moment, which is which he's, he's okay. Um, I don't think any bookwork is going to ensue. He's going to throw it in, actually. Indeed he is. Jonathan Hayes restarting the game with a throw in here. He's asking a few of the players to leave the vicinity. That's Mark O'Connell that wins the ball and he's followed by Packy Moore and it's Mark O'Connell gets on with it quickly. Would have been more advised to slow things down as it's easily defended by Ballysteen. And they come forward again with Shane Gallagher finding Danny Neville. It's a good play by Conor Enright to snuff out the attack and Shane Gallagher now former Limerick fo inter-county footballer gives it back to Neville. Very well worked move by Ballysteen here but they make. In fact it was a good defending from Moss Kelly and Stevie Walsh that snuffed out the danger and Bally Landers come away with the ball again. Yeah, but Bally Landers will be slightly worried because Danny, Danny, Danny Neville got through half the field and he got through, got, got through a couple of tackles and it was only just a lucky break that, that the ball spilled at the, at, at, at the wrong time or he was in on goal. Kieran Kelly now launching an attack for Bally Landers. Kelly looks to find Owen O'Mahony he was under pressure from Conor Enright O'Mahony checks back onto his left back onto his right now and O'Mahony trying to beat Enright he's got Danny Froon here it'll be an easy one for Froon that's another fantastic score for Ballylanders set up by Owen O'Mahony and again finished off by Danny Froon is that 1-5 now Matt? that's 1-5 from play all from play which is tr a tremendous return from, from Danny Froon like he, he's on fire like he uh, certainly he, he in my book he was the man that rescued him against Napierschik when, 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 when they were in trouble when he's on fire he's just irresistible he's just just a, just a joy to watch and and the pace and the trouble he can cause to, def, 
to defences. But we, 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 we really haven't seen Kieran Kelly getting the type of opportunities that Ballylanders create for him if they can create the open spaces for him because he, he, he's, he's a speedster and, and he, he's, he's a finisher. But certainly all the attention is on, on, on Danny Froon. But from a Ballystine point of view, whatever attention they're paying to him, it, it ain't working. Indeed it isn't in Ballylanders. Certainly have to... Line here just from the intermediate quarter final, and Gerald Griffins have beaten Mungrath 3 11 to 2 12. That puts them into a semi final. As Ballysteen, we concentrate back on this huge win for them. And as Ballysteen have a man down, but John and Hayes is telling Conor Rannan to get on with things. And it's missed by Mark Rannan here. And it's Owen Martin with the ball in. It's Jimmy Barry Murphy now who's moved again. He's an unstoppable force at the moment. It's Walsh, Tony Mahoney. Just off the post, off the post, and over the bar, another score from Valley Landers. It's now a 10 point lead, and it's very much looking like Valley Landers have their place in the county semi final, Matt. Jimmy Barry Murphy's last two uh, interventions in this game, I suppose, three minutes apart, were on his own 13 metre line and on the Ballystein 13 metre line. That'll give you an idea of the amount of ground he's covering and the amount of influence he has, the the, the way he laid off the ball there for for, for, for a finish, for a a vital point that pushes him. It it pushes him absolutely 10 points clear at this stage. And you you would have to say that that it's it's a difficult road back for Ballystein at this stage it certainly is a long road and Packy Moran launches one forward here for Belly Steen it's taken by Neville Neville takes on Stevie Walsh he's not able to round Stevie Walsh good pressure by him it's eventually given a free according to the referee 16 minutes of the second half played Belly Steen need more than a point to 10 points in it as Robert Whelan prepares to come onto the field for Belly Steen it's Robert Whelan that's on as Mark Rannan lines this one up Injured player in the full back line that's been down for a few minutes from Ballysteen is the man to come off. We'll check who it is in the moment as Mark Rannan lines up this free to put nine points between the teams. He puts that one over the bar and it's nine points in it, 116 to 17 in favour of Bally Landers. 16 and a half minutes played. I think it's Connor Enright indeed that's, that's gone, coming off for Ballysteen. Nine points in it as Declan O'Connor's in no rush to take this kick out for Bally Landers. Very impressive performance from the 2014 Limerick Senior Football Champions so far this evening. Declan O'Connor goes long, looks for Ona Mahoney. Robert Whelan's first intervention in the game is to give away a free. And referee John Hayes brings it forward. O'Mahoney into Kieran Kelly, marked tightly by O'Shaughnessy, but he finds Owen Walsh. Walsh back to Kelly. Jimmy Barry Murphy looks for it. Usually when Jimmy looks for it, he gets it, but Kelly goes himself. He was tripped. Referee says no. It's going to be a free out. Jimmy Barry Murphy with the foul. Bit of a shamazzle now. A couple of players on the ground. John Inez blowing his whistle furiously. But some of the players not in stop. More handbags than anything else, Matt, really. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there was too much to it. But uh, Barry Murphy was, was, was bottled up there. And um, there, there might be a card or two. Uh, but I'd say that might be the extent of it. Now he's calling over James O'Mara uh, again, and he's calling Jimmy Barry Murphy. I think Jonathan Hayes again was very much up with the play. Now his linesman, Trevor Mann, has come in, um, I suppose, to offer his opinion as to what happened. Um, there's certainly book work, the book is out. There seems to be two Belly Landers players there and a Belly Steen player. I'm just wondering, are, is there a Belly Landers player just being an interest? Oh, there's a straight red. It's a red card here for Belly Landers. Yeah. And Jimmy Barry Murphy has still been talked to. It's a yellow card for Jimmy Barry Murphy, but there's a yellow card, red card on the Belly Landers team. It must have been for something. Third man in as Jack Neville enters the fray for Belly Steen. It's Danny Froon, yeah. Danny Froon is the man who's been sent off here for for Valley Landers. It must have been for something off the ball, Matt. Jack Neville is on the field anyway for Valley Steen. He's gone in corner forward. As Valley Steen now, maybe a bit of lift for them as we get back with play. Sean Whelan in acres of space here as Valley Landers try to readjust after having a man sent off. It's 
Back to Danny Neville. Neville goes on the outside. There's four Belly Landers players around him. It's a shot from here. It's a goal for Belly Steen. There was four players around Danny Neville. He sucked in for him. Offloaded to Whelan. Whelan buried it. And Matt, a glimmer of hope for Belly Steen. Yeah, certainly a glimmer, a glimmer of hope. Belly Landers are now down to 14 players. Their talisman for the day, Danny, Danny Froon, uh, after scoring 1-5, has been shown a straight red. And now they, they have conceded a goal at the other end, which will give huge hope to, 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 to Belly Steen. Now, um, Jack Neville, I think, came on as a sub there. I, I didn't see who went off. Matt O'Mara that went off, Matt. Back with play now as Ona Man he does brilliantly to win the kick out. And then his foul off the ball. There's another little flash incident here. Ona Man he's just looking back onto it. Get back involved as Jason Daly gets involved with Jimmy Barry Murphy off the ball. It's all getting a little bit tense and unsavory here in Kilmallock at the moment. A little bit hot under the collar on, on a few occasions, but referee Jonathan Hayes is, is in control of it as much as he possibly can be. He's not being helped by both sets of players at the moment. It's another yellow card. This time, it's the Bally Scene substitute, Robert Whelan, who's been shown the card. It's going to be a free to Bally Landers, you'll imagine. It's on a Mahoney that's down. A needless free, Matt. And as I said earlier, Bally Steen are getting, going to get back into this game. The need to keep 14 on the field. Bally Landers have already had a man sent off. They've had a 14, uh, or keep 15 on the field. Um, uh, Bally Landers are down to 14. They're, they're numerically um, challenged at this stage now. Um, they've been in this situation already this year, and 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 they have withstood it against 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 Monaleen. But but what would be hugely significant, John, if if they hold out here, um, the straight red card to Danny Froon could mean he'd missed the county semi final. Which will, which would be a huge disappointment and a huge loss with, with, with the type of forum that, the type of absolutely irresistible forum that 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 that, he, that, that he's in today. Now, um, okay, they they they'll have Brian O'Callaghan, uh, Brian O'Connell, and of course the, the big man is still is still here. He's walking here in front of us at the moment, and I, I'm sure before the game is out, he uh, Kieran O'Callaghan that, that he will he will make some appearance. Just as we speak, I think is he going back? in to take off his track suit I'm not sure Palestine have made another sub with that breaking play it's Willie O'Mara has gone off and it's Morris Summers that has entered the fray for them as Palestine take possession with James O'Mara he leaves it off to Robert Whelan Whelan now back outside to John O'Shaughnessy O'Shaughnessy gives it long looking for Danny Neville Neville's unable to win it it's a soft enough free it's from a Bally Landers point of view from Stephen Walsh and Danny Neville now Stevie Walsh is already on a yellow so the last thing Ballylanders need now is to reduce the 13. Danny Neville is pleading his case that it's happening all day. Stevie disagrees. Either way, it's Mark Ranahan lining up this free for Belly Steen. Yeah, and, uh, you would uh, you would have to think that it's it, it's within Mark Ranahan's compass, and and, and suddenly a, a 10 point lead is is going to be whittled down to five, and with what um, about? just under eight minutes of normal time left and there's going to be a bit of additional time could be three or four minutes um it could be game on that is excellent goalkeeping by declan o'connor brilliant catch from declan o'connor from mark ran hands free it was there to be claimed but o'connor came out and did the business superb bit of leadership from the goalkeeper there man absolutely superb look he went for it and there was only one player going to get it that that that, that was a tremendous catch by declan o'connor O'Connor was fouled after collecting that ball. He restarts the game with the free. Michael O'Rourke and him lay on possession. He's lost the ball as O'Connor. It's O'Shaughnessy now. Chance for Steen. Chance for Marion. Brilliantly blocked. Ranahan again gives it across. Marion Summers with his first touch of the ball. Gets another goal for Ballysteen. Marion Summers with his first touch of the ball. Gets another goal for Ballysteen. Marion Summers with his first touch of the ball. Gets another goal for Ballysteen. And Declan O'Connor goes from 0 to 0 in a matter of seconds. Brilliantly blocked and caught Mark Ranahan's ball. Then a terrible mistake to come out soloing with the ball dispossessed by O'Shaughnessy the initial shot was stopped by Stevie Walsh and the goal came across to Mara Summers and Summers Matt he's been doing that for a long time he wasn't going to miss a chance like that oh no no he was not going to look a gift toss in the out look um, it, 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 it's really game on here at this stage it's what have we we have six minutes left now the leaders have to stand up to Bally Landers and do it all over again it's Bally Steen with the ball again with Whelan Whelan up to Connor. Jack, Jack Neville has the ball into James O'Mara O'Mara goes long again Sean Whelan's in space here Whelan chance to put, can he put it over the bar opted to take it on Neville they're going for goals or Bally Steen Neville comes back out for Mark Rannan 
Brennan shoots. It's gone to the left and wide. Valley Landers 116 to 37 ahead with what? 24 minutes of the second half played, Matt. Valley Steen have the extra man, but it's all Valley Steen. It's all Valley Steen. We're we're in for a, we're in for an, a very very exciting last six minutes. That was a sublime ball that was played by James O'Mara from around the middle, and he peaked out Sean Wheel in, in in an advanced position to some excellent play by by James O'Mara. James O'Mara, of course, who played with the county for for a number of years, has been an influential figure in 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 the last ten or fifteen minutes, and he's on the ball again. So O'Mara again gives it Danny Level number coach. That's great save, Declan O'Connor out for a 45. As Matt said, brilliant from James O'Mara in the build-up, laid it off to Neville. And a fantastic save from Declan O'Connor, who's now remained down, injured on the ground. I'm not sure what he blocked that with. It was a combination of hand and head, I think. Yeah, confirmation in the commentary box that indeed it was his face that all goalkeepers have to put themselves on the line. And that's exactly what Declan O'Connor did on that occasion. Brave save, Matt looking to make up from the mistake he made for the last goal. Yeah, certainly, um, like, you know, um, I, I suppose he, he was entitled to that bit of leeway but because of, of the save he made in the first half. An absolutely tre tremendous save, like, and that, that's another tremendous save, plus the very dangerous ball there, where, where he, he literally, he literally bossed the square when that ball came in, which was, which was fantastic. And the 45 taken by Mark Rennan. Again, he's off target with it. Palestine need to be getting these chances, albeit difficult one for Mark Rennan. Three points between the teams as we head to the 26th minute of this second half of this Limerick Senior Football Championship live on Sporting Limerick's YouTube channel as Declan O'Connor prepares to take this kick out again. Valley Landers badly in need of a score, down to 14 men. Missing Danny Froon since he was shown a straight red card. He'd won five to his name before that incident. As Ballystein, all Ballystein since that moment as Robert Whelan takes control. He's made a difference as he's come into the game. James O'Mara now with it. Gives it across and it's Shane Gallard, a vastly experienced Shane Gallard with the ball. He's O'Shaughnessy on his right. O'Shaughnessy now running towards goal. Gives it into Sean Whelan. Whelan onto his left. Never goal chance here. Whelan, oh, it's wide. Huge chance for Ballystein. Great move in the build-up from Ballystein. Absolutely excellent play. Brilliant link-up play from Gallagher O'Shaughnessy. Then into Whelan. Whelan cut him to his left. He had a go with his right and just a yard or two wide. Yeah, and he's, he's, he's been very, very, very impressive this evening. Um, he's he, Sean Whelan. Now, Ballylanders are after bringing in the very, very experienced James Kirby for, for, um, for Lee Martin. And um, it's a case of, I'd say, Liam has left everything on the pitch at this stage. Indeed, he has a huge performance put in by Liam Martin in the middle of midfield. As on a man, he... That's a free for Bell Landers on O'Mahony's pass, attempted pass, looking for Moss Kelly. was intercepted by M Morris Summers, but our free Jonathan Hayes has brought it back for an earlier foul. Which is, uh, you get a sense that it's just Bell Landers holding on here in the final moments of this game. 27 minutes played here in Kilmallock. And Stecklin O'Connor with possession of the ball. He's under a bit of pressure. Gives it back to Jimmy Barry Murphy. Jimmy now... Decides to go across his goals again. Cool as a cucumber, Declan O'Connor, despite that mistake that cost the goal only minutes ago. Mar Michael O'Rourke now gives a 50-50 hand pass, and it's Ballystein who have possession of the ball. It's going to be another free for them. Pull on the shoulder of on, on the neck of James O'Mara. Chance for Mark Rannan. He takes it quick. Danny Neville in possession now. Danny Neville left foot with a bit of a pot shot. Tail him right to the wide. Kind of rushed that effort to Danny Level and it's gone to the right. Another wide for Belly State. Yeah, and uh, they, 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 they'll be disappointed with it because the clock is winding down now. There are two minutes of normal time left exactly. I think the referee will probably add on about three, I would imagine. Possibly maybe five. And um, because there were a number of stoppages and we had the Shemuzzle and the Shemuzzle or two, I suppose. And... and um, He's going to allow for all that. Um, Billy Landers still have a bit of work to do to, to, to close it out. Um, I was expecting that Kieran O'Callaghan was going to come on, um, but he, he would come on in a forward position at the moment. I, I, I think it's a backs to the wall for Billy Landers at the moment. Oh no, Mahoney with a great catch from that kick up, but it's Billy Steen with possession once more. And it's Ranahan, Dara Ranahan now with, ball, with the ball. Great ball and there's room here for Morris Summers. Summers looking for a goal, might be better off taking the point. Into Danny Neville, it's another goal for Ballystein. And it's all square here in Kilmallock, a wonderful comeback from Ballystein. 
brilliantly dispossessed. A great ball in from Darren Rennan into the wide open Morris Summers. He could have tapped it over the bar to reduce the lead to two. Instead, he flicked it across to Danny Neville, who was waiting at the edge of the square. Absolutely no issue. We're all square here in Kilmallock. 116 to 47, Matt, and with 29 minutes, 15 seconds played, all to play for. Oh, certainly all to play for and you, you would have to say now that, that the momentum is very 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 much with, with Bally Seen at the moment and they're, they're, look they were going for goals and they got the goals they, they've got three of them and in again here it's Danny Neville with possession decides to give it back to Rannan Mark Rannan now back to Danny Neville Neville under pressure back inside to Mark Rannan not many options for Mark Rannan here and he gets the half shot away and it's good defending from Bally Landers who will need to come down the field. They haven't scored since being reduced to 14 men when Danny Froome was sent off. But again, Ballystein through Jack Neville win possession of the ball. Neville now. And he's fouled by Stevie Walsh. Brilliant play by Jack Neville to win a free deep in the corner. And another chance for Ballystein for Ballystein to take the lead. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's a very difficult angle. Now, um, it, it looks as if Danny Neville is going to take it on uh, as far as we can see down here on our extreme right. It's right out on the sideline. Uh, meanwhile, Kieran O'Callaghan is coming on for Bally Landers and we'll see who is going off. I'm just waiting for Danny Neville to take this free now for Bally Steen. From a very, very acute angle. He's looking to pass it instead. Gives it short and takes possession back again. It's into Packy more and more. With a shot to put Ballystein into the lead. And Ballystein have come back to go one point ahead in this Limerick Senior Football Championship quarter final game in Kilmallock. Excellent play from Ballystein. Time is up. We've played a minute of injury time. They lead by one. Excellent score from Packy Moore and Matt. And it looks at this juncture that Ballystein are heading to the last four. It, it looks and the, the, the momentum is all all with him and it all turned on on that one minute midway through the half there when when Danny Froon was showing a straight red and when Bally Steen went down and in, instantly um, got, got a goal and he, 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 he kicks down to the, it, what, what, what we thought at that stage we have to admit was an unlikely Bally Steen revival but like once once they got on the front foot and put Bally Landers on the hind foot they really press the throttle. Maybe one last chance here for Belly Landers. He'll level it. It's a free and it's a chance. Huge chance here. Jimmy Barry Murphy's clean through and goals. He's got a cannon there. Jimmy Barry Murphy. Go for Belly Landers. From nowhere, Belly Landers have retaken the lead here. Their first attack since Danny Foon's red card. And Belly Landers have astonishingly gone back in front. 216 to 48. Two minute, over two minutes injury time played. Jimmy Barry Murphy, Matt's mentioned it on several occasions. A key man for Bally Landers and Matt. He's popped up once again. He has, he has maybe come to the rescue. Dare we say it. There's such excitement in this game and there's such end-to-end -end stuff now. Although that was the one occasion that they went into the Bally Steen half. And oh, Jimmy Barry Murphy, he just showed all his experience. And in, in unleashing the shot at just the right time, right across the goalkeeper. Here we have danger again here at this side. Whelan has it now, taking the pass from Danny Neville. But Bally Landers are back to crowd him and they come away with the ball. And Jonathan Hayes is blown up. I'm not sure what happened there. There's a Belly Steen man down. I think we've, we've played over three minutes of injury time here. As referee Jonathan Hayes has given a free to Belly Landers, you have to think at this stage. Yes, it is. It's a free as Belly Steen have a couple of one player down in front of us here. Just mentioned Jimmy Barry Murphy a moment ago. He's absolutely on his feet. We're still looking for possession here down in front of us here. But so Rourke has it for Bally Landers. Back to Stevie Walsh as they're trying to play out time. Three and over three and a half minutes played of injury time. And referee Jonathan Hayes has blown up time. A huge win for Bally Landers. They've come out victorious in this quarter final game against Bally Steen thanks to Jimmy Barry Murphy's last gasp goal, 216 to 48. But Matt, they got an almighty fright. Yeah, they got they, they they got an almighty fright. Um, 
they suddenly got a wake up call and um, you, you just wonder how many wake up calls they have to get they got they certainly got one against Napiersik and they looked um, for long long periods for 20 minutes of the first half and I suppose for a quarter of an hour in the second half as if they had really learned and and um, because some of the football that they played was was <coughs> was very exciting it, it was very very good football they, they got some great scores they, <coughs> they had a great spread of scores but suddenly in one minute two minutes it all changed <coughs> and the whole dynamic of the game changed with 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 the, with the red card first of all to Danny Froon and and then uh, immediately to compound our woes you had you had Palestine going straight down and and and, and getting a goal and for and, and for the first time uh, that Palestine really got on on, 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 the, on the front foot and by when they went when they went on the front foot they they, they, they turned the screw and like <coughs> It was no surprise with the way they were playing and the way they were coming forward in droves that 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 they got further goals that they clawed it back and and, and from a Ballylanders point of view um, right at the death there when Packy Morton kicked it over it looked as if the unthinkable was about to happen that uh, a side that um, uh, that appeared to be cruising into the semi final were suddenly seeing their championship hopes slipping away from them but in one break. And, and, and we had spoken earlier about the influence of, of, of Jimmy Barry Murphy. And he, I suppose it was never more pronounced or never more as, a, as enormous as, a, as, a, as it was out there today, apart from the goal. But the goal was, you know, what a fitting way to win a, win a, win a quarter final. But <coughs> you have to spare a thought for Belly Steen. Um, I, I, I would say um, I, I was putting it down at, in the first half that they were stage struck being in, in, at, at, at this stage of the competition you know for the, for the first time in a while and but in, in the second half it looked as if the momentum that they, that they had at, at, um, in, on the run up to half time when they closed the gap um, from 8 points to 4 going in at half time which was which was suddenly um, much more more manageable that they had left that momentum behind them when they when they came out and and and, and Belly Landers eased into a 116 to to 16 lead and little did we think at that stage that Belly Landers would only get a last minute goal to win the match that's what it 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 it, it 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 that's what transpired with thrills, with spills, with excitement, with schmuzzles, we had goals, we had a full-blooded championship contest. Ballylanders will probably consider themselves fortunate to be in the last four. Hard luck on Ballysteen. Fortunate indeed for Ballylanders and Matt. On the other scheme of things, we now know the last four of the competition. Adair have now Adair and Newcastle West have been joined by Valley Landers and Monlean after today's games. I've been John Keown, Sporting Limerick YouTube channel. Thanks to Matt O'Callaghan for his co-commentary today. We'll be back soon for another round next week for the Limerick Senior Hurling Championship quarterfinal.